Okay. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ya rasulillah, wa alihi wa sahbihi jma'in. Thumma ma ba'at, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Okay, so we uh, we continue with uh, the messenger, story five. And if you remember last week, we were up to Surah at deen Yes, so we went through these stories. So we covered last week where we continued on. We continued on from Surah ad duha the morning brightness. And we said the Surahs last week talked about hope and positivity. So Surah ad duha the morning brightness, you turn over a new leaf, which gives hope, gives us hope. Like we said, look, look ahead, look at the positives. Be grateful for the things uh, in the past and turn over a new leaf. And this gives hope to the Prophet وسلم, as well, as does the other surah. The next surah, surah Ashar, to expand. And we said to expand, um, meaning to expand the chest of the Prophet this is what Allah SWT did to remove the difficulty in understanding the very heavy word of the Quran. So remove that difficulty, make it easy for the Prophet وسلم, and know like we talked about last week, realize that with every difficulty comes ease. So with every hardship, every time there's something difficult, if it's followed, something easy comes from it. If we have the right um, um, intention and we, we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during that difficulty. And an example of this is just ask the farmer, we said, who looks after the thin, the fig. So the farmer who looks after the fig is an example of this where he spends, he, he does some hard work in um, um, cultivating the crop and in um, sowing the seeds and making sure sure, uh, sh sure the soil is is um, in the best condition, watering it throughout the season. And then finally he gets the harvest of the fig and of other plants as well, just like that. So ask the far farmer who will tell you definitely with difficulty comes ease when the crop grows. Okay, so now Surah at Deen, which uh, we're... Um, we shall continue on from inshallah surah at din this surah also it begins with some oaths yet again so many surahs many surahs um, of the uh, that we've covered these last surahs they begin with oaths Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he starts by saying what dini was they do by the fig and the olive so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath and this is representative of what you understand, what Tini was Zaytun, the fig and the olive, is representative of Jerusalem and Isa alayhi salam. So the Prophet Isa, Prophet Jesus, he is um, alluded to in these um, in the first ayah because the fig and the olive, these grow in Jerusalem. So the Prophet Sallallahu um, the Prophet Isa alayhi salam is referred to here. What Tini was Zaytun, what Turi Sinin. So the next ayah, Turi Sinin, Mount Sinai, this is. Prophet Musa alayhi salam, yes, because it's Mount Sinai where you understand this is where Prophet Musa alayhi salam, he spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Wahad al Balad al Amin. And the third, the next ayah, this is the city of security, and this is Makkah, right? So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indicating the continuity, the continuity of the faith. And now he's referring to the Prophet. So in this first few ayahs, we have a reference. We have a reference here. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "You are in the company of Isa alayhi salam and of Musa alayhi salam, the great messengers that were in the past." So he is saying to us, really, as Muslims, and he's saying to the Jewish people who follow Musa alayhi salam, and he's talking to the Christians who follow Isa alayhi salam, that we all have the same ilah. We all have the same um, ilah, the same message. We have the same God. We all worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And we all come from the same line. So this beginning of the surah is just a reminder to all the faiths. You know, Isa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, the prophets, great prophets, and prophets of Allah alayhi salam, that they all came with the same message, basically, which is belief in one God, belief in the hereafter, belief in heaven and hell, and the same concept that we, we have. So it's just a reminder. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referencing these three faiths in the beginning. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he basically gives the subject of the, of the oath because you remember, like you have some oaths, Fatini was Zaytun, Maturi Sini, Nahad al Balad al Amin. What's the subject? What's the important message that Allah SWT wants to get across? This is the very important message. So 
Allah SWT is saying, we created the human being in the best of shapes, the best of molds, the best of statues, the best of designs. You know, we were created the best. And how do we know that? Just look at the example he's given. Uh, he's given the examples of the prophets, the great messengers. You know, they have the best of stature, the best of states. So we were created good. The default of man or human being is good. And this is unlike, for example, you know, other faiths where um, we'd say, you know, um, man has been conceived in evil because um, he committed the uh, original sin. You know, talking about Adam alayhi salam, you know, the concept of Prophet Jesus dying for the sins of, ma of men. You know, this wrong, wrong um, belief that people have. That's all false. That is not Islam. That's not the true reality. The true reality is that that the human being has been created good in the best of shapes and molds. So he's no, the man is uh, the human being is good, and the man was created the best of the best, right? As default. Then what happened after he's created the best of the best? Then what happened? Then Allah Subhanahu wa says we caused him to be of the lowest of the low. So after he's been created the best, the best stature. He's become the lowest of the low. In other words, because of the own deeds of human beings, because of the, their own deeds, of our own deeds, because of the human being rejecting the status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him, because Allah gave him a status, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he created uh, a human being, and through the examples we see of the great prophets, we have a status of being the best of the best. Then he says, Then he reduced us to the lowest of the low. Okay, why is this? Because of their own deeds of the human beings. So that's the reason why, you know, because of um, rejecting the status, because in a, in, a, in a way, he's rejecting the status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him, this person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows a group of people to reclaim the status. In other words, you know, he says, then we reduce you to the lowest of the low. But then he says, how can you get back this title of being the best of the best? Because I've just told you, you know, you were created the best. Then you are now, you, you push down to the lowest of the low. How do you get back? back this badge the status this prize of being the best of the best how do you do this and then Allah mentions this right in the next ayah he says um, so he says the way you get back the status of being the best of the best you have to accept you know those who believe you have to believe and do good deeds so again iman and uh, amal salih uh, iman and good deeds that's how you get the status back of being the best of the best. But they shall have a reward that's unlimited, right? They have a reward which is unlimited because they're going to get back to being the best of the best. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends, you know, فَمَا يُكَذِّبُكَ بَعْدُ بِالدِّينَ أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِأَحْكَمِ الْحَاكِمِينَ So what, what has caused you, the disbelievers? He then asks a question. He then talks, he, he, he directs this message. Um, this question to disbelievers. He says, what has caused you, disbelievers, then, to deny the Day of Judgment? After everything I've told you, you know, after I've said that, you know, um, you can reach the highest status and you have all the clear evidence and proofs, what has caused you to deny the Day of Judgment? Don't you want to be the highest level? So this is what Allah Subhanahu is addressing to people. Don't you want to be the highest level again? Don't you want to be in the default position of being the best of the best? Don't you want that badge? Don't you want that prize? Then if you do, then accept Allah, accept the Day of Judgment, be good, you know, do good deeds, be good to others, and you will get that position back of being the best of the best. And then finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu bi ahkamil hakimin. Is not Allah the best of all judges? So in other words, you are created, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you to be in the highest position, to be the best of the best. And he says, I'm giving you that opportunity to get that position back. All you have to do, iman and good actions, that's all you need to do. But if you reject Allah, you reject the judgment day, Allah SWT is so just, you know, He's so just, He's the best of judges. So no matter what your false concepts are, your false beliefs, you know, your, your false ideas, your false desires, you will not get that position back that you were created for. You will not become the best of the best. So I'm the best judge, I'm watching what you do. So this is, you know, uh, just in a nutshell, a very quick summary of Surah um, at deen so this is just uh, reminding us to just continually do, uh, remember, Iman, uh, your Iman and your uh, good action. So two things, constantly we need to display this, right? Iman is, you know, uh, our, uh, our worship, uh, our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our amal salih, our relationship, our good actions with other people as well. Okay, inshallah.
So that's uh, Surah at -Din. And if, if there's anything which is unclear or any questions, just um, you can type it in or just um, shout as well. So what we're saying, Surah at the fig. So an example of difficulty then is, is um, ask the farmer who looks after at the fig, we said. So the fig and the olive, so this surah, remember, we said, what dini was zaytun, the fig and the olive are blessings of Allah. They're blessings, right? So this is a very, very big blessing. You know, when you have um, these tasty fruits, like the, the fig is very, it's good for us. The olive is, is very good for us. It's, um, it's, uh, it's amazing, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What else is a blessing of Allah? What else is a blessing? As is your creation, right? That's also a blessing. Like, look at us. Look at yourself. You know, the food we eat is a blessing, and our creation is a blessing. As is your creation. You came from, so what did we come from? This, um, you know, we, our creation is a blessing, and we came from what? What did we come from? This is the next surah. Anybody? What is the next surah? Which comes after surah at -Din? So the next surah is, there's a lot of for that. Okay, excellent. Uh, Sadia, thanks. Uh, I'll say yes. Surah uh, Al Alak. Al Alak, yes. That's the next surah because we came from what? We claim Alak basically means a clinging substance. You know, a clinging clot? Like, uh, you know, we came from a drop of water and that water becomes like a slowly it takes shape, it, it becomes flesh, like a fleshy material and it clings, something which clings. That's what uh, Alak means, something which clings, like in the you know, inside like the stomach, the womb of the mother there. And this is what we understand, Allah. It's like a clinging substance. And, you know, by the way, there's a miracle in the Quran regarding the development of um, the, the human being from um, a liquid, small drop, right up to how a baby is formed. Because these, the detailed stages mentioned in the Quran, nobody could have known at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So again, that's, that's a miracle of the Quran. And so uh, Allah, is basically a clinging substance. So we came from this. So this is a miracle if you think about it. Like, look at us now and look where we came from. So Al Alaq, this surah, number 96, but this surah is, like, I'm sure, like we know this, it is the first revelation of the Quran. The first five um, ayat of the surah, Ikra bismi rabbika ladi khalaq, khalaq al insana min alaq, Ikra wa rabbuka al akram, al ladi yallamad al kalam. These first five um, ayat, these, this is the first revelation which came down to Prophet وسلم, in the cave of Hira, right when the age of Jibreel came to the Prophet. وسلم. So this is the first uh, revelation, the first few ayat. And the rest of the surah, you know the surah from that, uh, um, the re all the rest of the surah, that came down like over, over the next few years. So again, you know, the miracle is like, look how... Um, all the Quran is placed perfectly, like the surahs are continued. Even though some um, ayat came years later, they're placed, um, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu was told by um, Jibreel, because he was informed by Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, you know, this ayah goes in this surah, this ayah goes in this surah, so you have your complete surahs, even though they might have taken a few years for the revelation. So the point is, what we're saying is that, so this is um, the first revelation, starting from uh, Iqra, and we all know, you know, uh, this, uh, the story behind this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here the importance, so something very important um, in the surah, you know, right at the beginning. He mentions the importance of um, knowledge, knowledge, and the importance of recitation. Because ikra, right, this means to recite. You know, we are, um, the first ayah, ikra bismi rabbika ladi khalaq. Here, ikra, it could mean to read, but also in this context, it means to recite. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when the Jibreel salam, said to him, ikra, he said, I don't know how to read. The Prophet ﷺ taught that Iqra means to read in this context. But here, Jibreel ﷺ, he meant recite, like recite, say. So Jibreel said, you don't need to know how to read. You know, he said, Iqra bismi rabbik. So, i.e., recite, Iqra bismi rabbik. Iqra bismi rabbik. Recite bismi rabbik in the name. You know, your recitation is not going to be from a book. It's in the name of Allah, recite, um, it will not be from a book, it will be, it will be from, it will be um, from Allah, it will be by Allah, via Allah. Basically, in other words, this special ikra recita recitation 
is directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the words of Allah. So this is a special uh, recitation. So you, Allah will directly tell you what to say. So don't worry. You just need to recite and follow. That's what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being told. So it's very important um, here. Um, what um, we're learning, like we said, two things, knowledge and recitation in the surah. So you don't need a book, Ya Rasulullah. That's what Allah is saying. You don't need a book. You, who needs a book when you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught the whole Quran just via speech. And it wasn't, this is the knowledge the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he got. So your, in other words, you know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he couldn't read and he couldn't write. We know this. So your illiteracy, in other words, the fact that you can't read and write, Ya Rasulullah, the fact that you are like this, this is going to become a praise for in generations to come. How so? Your status is going to be raised so high because you couldn't read and write. That's a miracle because, you know, that's going to testify to the truth, truthfulness. Because think about it. Um, this is the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam couldn't read, he couldn't write, but the whole Quran, he, he recited the whole Quran, he gave the whole Quran to his companions. People cannot accuse him of, you know, copying or, you know, reading it from somewhere because he couldn't read, he couldn't write. So this has to be a miracle. And this proves this, um, that, you know, the truthfulness of the message, the fact that he could not read or write. So that's the, the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So point is, when you have Allah, you don't need the books of men. You know, and this is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the direct teacher of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, when he says, Ikra bismi rabbik, your recitation will be directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the name of Allah. So you, this is this is the miracle. And it, and what did uh, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the surah that follows? He says, you know, recite, you know, Ikra, Ikra bismi rabbik alladhi khalaq. Recite in the name of your master who created. He created man from this cling, clinging substance, this clot, Allah, from this piece of flesh. And he mentions, you know, recite. Go ahead and read, you know, read and recite. Your Lord, your master, is the most generous. You know, Akram, he's the most generous. And because he's going to teach you all of this, and he will cause you to recite, he's the most generous. So, in other words, read, Ikra is a key message here for the message of Allah. Your Ummah, and this is the key message for everybody else as well, all of us, is for us to read, basically. Read, learn, and this is, you know, gain knowledge. And this is a very important message right at the start. So you've seen it, this revelation, like this deen, like we need to gain knowledge, obviously, uh, to know uh, what to do. Um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, your master is the most generous. So, you know, um, think about this. We are the only species, like we are the only um, creation that can record down our thoughts for future generations. You know, just think about it. For example, you know, you know, monkeys, you have a monkey, you have a lion, you have cats or fish. They can't, they can't write down something, can they? And they can't pass it on to the next generation, can they? Like, they can't do that. We are the only species, like the thoughts we have, we can write them down, we can build on thoughts, we can build on knowledge, we can pass it down to later generations. This knowledge passes down, and that's, that's how we, we, the world progresses, because knowledge is passed down. Like, can you imagine, like, for example, um, if every generation, you know, we couldn't pass down any knowledge. So whenever a new generation came, they had to go back to zero. They had, they had to reinvent everything, reinvent the car, reinvent the wheel, like reinvent fire. Just think like we, we just couldn't progress. So animals are like this. They go back to zero each generation. The animals don't keep progressing, you know, like um, human beings do. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to get to where we are now with all this progression. And how is this possible? If you think, how is this possible? Because if you look at technology, like look at te technology around us, look at the laptop, look at the phone, look at how, um, the means, the devices you're listening to this, um, um, you know, listening to this class, look how we're having a live session. Just look at that, for example, from different locations around the world. And we are leaving recordings. And for Allah subhanahu wa he knows for how long we leave recordings, like you record something on YouTube, video, you put the video up on YouTube, that knowledge stays there. This technology would not be here unless we are building from previous knowledge, right? Previous legacies until we have reached, you know, you've an amazing conclusion where you actually, um, you have all the things we have and you leave them behind. So the point is, why have we achieved this? How have we achieved this? The key thing is what? Ikra wa rabbuk al-akram. allama bil kalam. That's the key thing. Because in the surah, we learn that there are two types of knowledge. So, Allah is saying to us, you know, 
recite read and your master is the most generous the one who taught with the pen so there's two things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying so inshallah you know, I hope you're following because it's very important um, the concept we're talking about that right from the beginning of the surah we learn that there's two types of knowledge two types of knowledge one is divine knowledge you know ikra recite is knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and secondly is worldly knowledge knowledge from people you know when you write down Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you know here um um he's taught us the pen you know what's the significance of the pen the pen like we're saying is to write down knowledge write down record our thoughts for future generations so this is like worldly knowledge this is like knowledge we we build upon to construct like houses cars these things so this is also important there's two types of knowledge there's divine knowledge and worldly knowledge and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he encourages both types of knowledge so he says two types of knowledge because actually the beneficial knowledge is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all the knowledge is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the knowledge of revelation and the knowledge to do to build on worldly things is from Allah. So the knowledge, but the priority is, like we understand, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That comes first. It's directly from Ikra Bismi Rabbik, is the knowledge of the Quran. So the knowledge of the people, don't forget this as well, that knowledge of people, you know, when people record knowledge, that can change because that can be right or wrong like in future generations people might say something record something but somebody might make a mistake and that may change so but the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Quran etc this is sacred knowledge and this does not change this is directly from Allah so you know this is knowledge of for example this Quran the knowledge of sciences of the Quran this knowledge of uh, fiqh, fiqh uh, sharia you know knowledge of uh, the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knowledge of Islam, how we worship Allah, our laws, our ethics, you know, our theology. This is all knowledge of Islam. And this is this is the most important knowledge that we need to understand. So and that's the knowledge that comes from Allah. And then we have, like we said, um, then we have the knowledge of the pen, meaning the knowledge of the other things like history, the knowledge that is worldly knowledge, based on science, medicine, technology, all these different things. So the, I think the point we're making here is that we know we should go ahead and learn these two types of knowledge because uh, as long as it doesn't contradict the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala go ahead and learn the world knowledge as well because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and both of these knowledges you know are from Allah one is directly from Allah and the other is because Allah has allowed us to gain that knowledge so it's like you know he's allowed us to 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 develop and gain that knowledge meaning potentially you know we could be making mistakes but um, we can be corrected so you know we are making efforts for this so that's that's the main thing the knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most important to gain because that is true that can't be false you know that's what we're saying so you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Akram like we said he's the one who is the most generous giving us both of his knowledges and by the way you know Ikra al-Alaq it came down we know this it's the importance of knowledge then the next surah which comes down what is the next surah does anybody know the next revelation in the order of the revelation what was the next surah? the first surah which we um which was revealed to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is surah al-alaq yes and we said this is summarizing it is the importance of gaining knowledge right the second surah that was came down is if you remember what's the next surah if you remember surah al-qadr okay this is not going to for that um surah al-qadr not quite um, in the order of revelation, the next surah, if you remember, is Surah Al Mudathir. Yeah, Al Mudathir, Kumfa and that was the next surah that was revealed to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that surah tells us the importance of action. Like Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala saying to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Kum, stand up, Kumfa and stand up and warn, do things." Okay, so the first surah that was revealed, Surah Al Alaq, was about knowledge. If you remember this, the second surah is about action. Get up and do things. And the third surah, which was revealed, does anybody know? It's um, the beginning of our um, story number five. The, 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 the next surah, these first two surahs, it's the Prophet wasallam. He was also covered up. What was the other surah? Do you remember? When he was covered up in a, in a cloth. He was also covered up. Just like Surah Al-Mudathir, the Prophet wasallam was covered up in a cloth. This is the third surah revealed. This is Surah al Muzammil, Muzammil, yes. Ya ayyuhal Muzammil, kumil layla illa kalila. That's the third surah. And what is this surah? What is this surah about? The third surah? 
this tells you the importance of spirituality, right? Prayer, you know, your task, your rituals. Ya ayyuhal muzammil, kumil layla illa kalila. Like, pray, the night prayer. So, you know, these few things we talk about, which is still following. Surah al-Alaq is the importance of knowledge. Surah al mudathir the next surah, is the importance of action. Surah al muzammil is the importance of, basically, prayer, you know, spirituality. These three things are the triangle. It's like a triangle. You draw a triangle. This is the triangular basis of our religion of Islam. Knowledge, action, and spirituality. Three things. So do you understand? Like this is these three things you really need to focus on. Knowledge, gaining the knowledge, doing action, and our spirituality, like our, our prayer, our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to incorporate all three things in our life. And that's you know the this, these first three um, surahs that were revealed, they, they, they talk about these subjects. So if only one of these things is missing on a regular basis, you know, it affects our balance, basically, you know, in our homes, in our societies, etc. So, you know, um, and so Surah Al-Alaq, this is knowledge. So it begins with knowledge, right? Knowledge, when you gain knowledge, this must lead to, this must lead to what? It must lead to action, good action. And then with action, you need to have proper spirituality. So in that order. So, you know, and this is just a very, very key thing to remember. So, you know, um, the, the knowledge, action, and spirituality. And if we give you an example, we can give you an example um, just to show you this point that, you know, imagine um, someone who gives dawah, like, you know, somebody, um, maybe like they tell people about Islam, maybe they're outside, you know, you sometimes you see videos, maybe in parks, or somebody's telling people, you know, there's a, um, on the streets to, um, um, uh, you know, on the streets of telling people about Islam. So they are, maybe they've gained some knowledge, now they're doing some action, like to tell people, you know, this is the reason why you should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this proof that there's one God, etc, etc. But then if the other person, just imagine who they're talking to, if that person starts arguing back, saying, I don't believe what you're saying, you know, I believe in the uh, statues, and you know, what you're saying is wrong, and you know, this is all made up. Just imagine the person is giving dawah, just imagine if you get into an argument with them and say, no, I'm right. What I'm telling you, there definitely is a creator, you know, the, you know this is, there definitely is somebody, um, you know, and you start getting into a fight and an argument. Well, the point is, your knowledge, your knowledge in your, has not led you to correct action because something is missing. What is missing? Number three, spirituality is missing because of the reason why maybe that person is getting into arguments is because they are not in the heart they're not saying they're vicar like you know they're not um have, maybe they're praying regularly the fact that they that spirituality is missing the action of giving dawah like they're, they're doing it but they're getting into arguments is wrong because if you're giving dawah you need to have thick skin like if people swear at you whatever they do you need to just be quiet and be patient and take it it's like the prophet sallam took it so the point is these three things knowledge action and spirituality they need to go hand in hand and then otherwise your balance is affected and that affects, you know, um, even um, an example how we display ourselves Islam to other people. So that's very important, you know, if that makes sense. That these three three surahs they indicate, like we said, this beautiful triangle mechanism: knowledge, action, and spirituality to perfect your Islam. So that's something really important. And the rest of the surah here, um, you know, Surah Al-Alaq, is basically um, is refuting. In other words, it's um, Refuting Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl is an enemy of Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala threatens Abu Jahl here. You know, and he threatens all the enemies of Islam by saying, you know, you wanted to stop the Muslims praying, in particular, you want to stop the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you know, I will deal with you, don't worry. And no one can compete with the power of and the resources and the armies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how a summary of how the Surah Al Alaq, how it um how it ends. But um you know, um, with an example, um, like we said, of an enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's just something very important that we learn from um, Surah Al-Alaq. And like we said, uh, the next three, the next two surahs which have been revealed after this. So I hope that's clear. Is that clear? Any questions we have just regarding Surah Al-Alaq, what we've talked about? Is that making sense? So we just talked about the importance of you know, continually just trying to um you know, knowledge uh, knowledge meaning you, you're gaining knowledge but that has to lead to good action so 
whatever you you learn you, you implement it and you keep up the spirituality you keep up you keep treating the heart like you know we've, we've talked about previously you treat the heart all the time you have to um you have to um keep the heart soft keep the heart soft with the remnants of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that comes hand hand in hand with gaining knowledge and good action so um that's very important so we said surah 95 the fig we said um you know the fig and the olive are blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as is your creation because you came from al alaq you came from a clinging substance so it's amazing you know like we said this substance that clings like a leech this is um, the embryo it's a clinging substance and this is by the way you know this is like we talked about there's a miracle um in the quran that when we uh, like we came from a liquid and that liquid then becomes a clinging substance and when it's a clinging substance when it's an alaq it basically becomes like a leech form, like a leech form. It looks like a leech. And that's one of the meanings of alak. And one of the meanings of alak is like you know, a leech-like substance. And if you look at a picture of the embryo when it's um, at the very early stages, it will literally, it looks like a leech. It's got like these little lines, you know, a leech would suck the blood, the little um, creatures. It actually looks like that. Like subhanAllah, like the description of this is, like we said, it's not possible that anybody could have known at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam known this so this proves again that this is the word of Allah so you know we grow up we we you know we, we start off like a leech and then we grow up and then we learn to read and this is and this is the next surah surah number 97 so that the next surah what we'll do we will um, do that next week we'll cover that next week and um, so what we are saying is that you know you grow up and you learn to read that's and then we'll talk about surah number 97 which is next so uh, i think inshallah we will um, leave it there and um so we have a few minutes we'll leave it there maybe we'll just go over we'll we'll um, just do a refresh of the story so jazakallah khairan everyone for joining participating and listening in malas mantala reward you all bless you all um the understanding of the quran and um, allow us all to gain knowledge, to allow us all to do good, um, you know, from al salih, good actions, and allow us to gain proper spirituality and treat the heart so we can, like we said, we talked about this um, beautiful triangle of Islam. We can gain this, um, keep this triangle, keep this balance in our lives. So this is um, where we'll end. Any, any questions or any, anything anybody wants to talk about? I think what we'll do. We can very quickly, we have a few minutes. Let's just go over story five from the beginning. Let's see if we can just cover that, just to give us a refresh. Okay, so story five, the messenger. Anything you have, just type in and we can address that as well. But inshallah, if we just do a quick recap of where we are. So, story five is the messenger. We said, surah, we said the first surah in story five is Al Muzammil, the one wrapped up in Prophet. He's wrapped up in a blanket in comfort. But Allah SWT says to him, stand for the, the Hajjid prayer to remember Allah. He was also Al Mudathir. He was the one covered up out of fear. This is more out of fear, Al Mudathir. But now, stand up and warn others. Warn others about what? Al Qiyamah, the standing up. So stand up and warn, warn others about the standing, the day of judgment. But when you stand up, don't stand up too proud because that's like the arrogant Al Insan, human being. Instead, be humble. Remember a time, a Dahar. The humans did not exist. But what did exist? The question of Allah Panta did, right? Al Mursalat, the winds that scattered, they were there. Now, what are some jobs of the angels? Angels, they spread the winds. And An Naba, they spread the news of the Akhirah to the prophets. The angels also are An Nazia, they're soul snatchers. We talked about this for bad and good people. And the good can be unknown. So we, we talked about this. The good can be unknown. So don't, Abbasa, don't frown. Don't frown at the blind person. The poor person instead give your time and attention before some things happen before some scenes of the day of judgment happen what are they at the the wrapping up of the sun this is what we're talking about wrapping up the darkness what else happens along with the tearing up of the sky this is bad destruction bad guys should be scared who else should be scared who else should be scared al the cheaters are going to be scared they should be scared because they're going to be dealt with once al inshikak happens, the complete tearing up of the sky, again, the judgment scene happens. What happens when the sky tears up? You can see 
Al Buruj, the large stars, just like castles in the sky, the constellations, that they're going to be a witness. Stars are going to be a witness. So will At Tariq, the night's arrival. Remember the star that reminds us that the angels are writing our good and bad deeds? The bright star is an amazing creation of Al A'la, the Most High, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, some major signs of Allah are what? What are some major signs? Al Ghashiyah, the great covering event, is a major sign. And now we have like a walk through of a day and night. Al Fajr, the daybreak, is a great sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when it's Al Fajr, you can clearly see Al Balad, the city, right? Which is Mecca. And now it's day. So the Fajr, the daytime, you see the city. What happens at this day? As shams, the sun begins to rise. That's another great sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Soon it's going to be night, al layl another great sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's going to be followed by the next day. It's going to be a duha morning brightness. Again, turn over a new leaf the next day. And this gives hope, turning over a new leaf to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as does a shah to expand. The chest of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that gives him relief. Remove difficulty in understanding the Quran. And with every difficulty comes ease. Just ask the farmer who looks after a teen, the fig. The fig and the olive are blessings of Allah, like we talked about today. They're blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it reminds us of, you know, the commonality between the three faiths, that we all have the same ilah. The, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is the last message that should be followed. The fig and the olive are blessings of Allah, as is your creation, because you came from al-alak, the clinging substance. Yes, this amazing embryo, this leech-like substance, which is a miracle of the Qur'an. Then you go up and learn to read. And then we'll, inshallah, we'll continue next week. So, um, Jazakallah khair, everyone, for listening. Jazakallah khair, then, uh, for that. And hope the lesson is beneficial. And we'll catch up next week. Okay. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.